Hi guys, I just wanted to make a quick video on a, an important tool that I want to raise awareness of uh, within Ignition Perspective. I work with a lot of Ignition engineers. Uh, it's kind of a full-time gig and many of them don't even know this tool exists, so I like to remind them. Um, and the tool, obviously, from the title of this video is the Configuration Explorer. I just wanted to show uh, for those people who aren't aware that it exists, first of all, uh, let me show this information here. This is the tool I'm talking about here. Configuration Explorer is its name. That's what it's named in the designer, but it's been in ignition since 8.1.22. So if you're on that version or anything later, um, you should have it in your designer. Basically what the tool is, or at least how I've been using it, is it's an advanced search. Um, search tool. So it can search for many things within a view. You can see them here. Um, bindings, transforms, message handlers, uh, custom methods, anything you define basically on the view. I think it probably does a search of the underlying view. So like the JSON of the view that gets saved on the file system, it probably searches there and that's how it parses. Um, one example how actually uh, came to be familiar with this tool is I had to reverse engineer a pretty complicated screen that somebody else worked on and I had to figure out how it worked. There was a lot of message handlers, a lot of uh, property change scripts, a lot of bindings, a lot of stuff going on on the view is very complicated. It's basically the heart of a pretty large ignition project. So I could just click through everything, through every component and look at all of the scripts and bindings and figure out how it worked that way. But I was fortunate enough to find this tool, the Configuration Explorer, where I could search um, for certain message handlers to look at their definition and to look at property change scripts, to look at methods and where they're defined. So that's basically what I want this short video to be about. I wanna show you how this tool can be used and just make you familiar uh, and aware that it exists in the first place. So to do this, I downloaded this very beautiful project from the exchange. It's the um, building management system, public demo. It's a pretty popular project. Uh, it's one of the nicer looking projects that IA put out. Some of their sales demos, to be honest, don't look very nice in my humble opinion. Uh, but this one looks great. Um, good design, good UI. So I downloaded it and this part here, uh, hopefully you don't get home, hung up on uh, the detail. This is just an example that I pulled up to show a somewhat complicated screen and how to use the Configuration Explorer tool to look at how the screen works. So hopefully this works. I didn't really look through this project too much just to keep it somewhat natural uh, and show you how I would use the Configuration Explorer where to find that tool. So the first thing I'll do here, since I'm not familiar with this project, I'll just launch it like this. So right click on the root page, that's a good guess. And you can see I already had a tab open here. And then I can look at this primary view here, which goes to the main view, which makes sense. And it looks like there's a breakpoint container type with a large and small breakpoint. So I'll look at the large one. I'm trying to find a view that's somewhat complex that we can drill into and look at. Uh, hopefully we'll find a view like that. So building automation page main, main large. So I can go here and find it. But ever since, uh, I actually don't remember the, the exact release, they, there is this very handy little icon here. If it's within the same project, you can just click this icon and it'll open the view for you, which is very nice. Um, okay, so it looks like there's another level of nesting, which is not a problem for us. There's a navigation embedded view and also the main page. So let's look at the navigation. Again, we'll go one layer deeper. So we'll look at the navigation large and look at this view here. So now we're kind of at the lowest level here. You can see there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of bindings and different container types and stuff. So this is somewhat what I wanted to see. Let's look at the parameters here. Let's see what, let's toggle these. 
Okay, this is just a selection. So I'm assuming if I select three, it selects the last one. Okay, expanded is probably a Boolean value. Yeah, so it changes how it looks here, which is, which is good. Let's actually take this expanded property and see what all on the view changes when I toggle this expanded. So here's kind of the, the point of this video. So if, to get to the configuration explorer, there's actually several ways to do it. Uh, the way I've always used it is to go to the view itself uh, and right click and then hit configuration explorer or do a control R. So which I actually never used. Okay, so that works as well. I always right clicked here and you can open this tool here uh, as you saw in the screenshot in the documentation side. And you can see a list of all of the properties, all of the definitions, and then you can filter by type here. So you can see expression, structure bindings, different types of bindings. Um, I think if we have, yeah, we have events on click. And then if, if we were to have uh, message handlers defined, they would show up here. So this is a list. Um, usually what, what I've done on a complex screen is I'll filter here. Uh, so before we do that, I want to show you that the configuration explorer, you can open it at any level within the view. Um, so it can go to this header view or header container. It looks like it's a flex container. And then I can also go to configuration explorer here, and then it'll be limited to that, to the scope of this header flex container. I'm assuming actually that's how it works just because of that's, that's how it works for the view. So I'm assuming if I do expand, Configuration Explorer, I'm only seeing um, the configurations that are located within the expand flex container or any children of it. Uh, but I usually opened it at the view level. So again, let's open that and we'll search here for, um, for this expanded property. So what I'll do is I'll do params.expanded. The reason why I'm doing that is because there's a difference. If you're doing a binding, the binding is going to look different than if you did a, if you do an expression binding, it's going to look different than if you do a property binding. That's kind of a, I don't know if I want to jump into that detail, but most, most um, bindings on the view will have at least params dot expanded. Maybe I should expand on what I just said just to not confuse you. So let's go here. Let's add a custom property test. So if we bind to, if we do a property binding and then we bind to params.expanded, you can see view params expanded. Now, if I do an expression binding, I'm talking about the text itself here. If I go to params expanded, it's going to look different. Well, here, the syntax is actually the same. But if I were to go in the script and access it, so return here, expanded, you see that the text is different, but what is common is params.expanded. That's kind of what I was getting at. So just to avoid confusion there, let me go back here where I was and type in params.expanded. This is going to bring up, if I can spell, this is gonna bring up every instance where my uh, view parameter is used. So you can see there's a bunch of expression bindings and also this on click script action that is used. And so this is kind of the purpose of the tool is to see where different parameters are used. You can do the exact same thing with a custom property. Uh, so let's, let's look at some of these examples. If we go to this expression binding, you can see the expression here. Um, view params expanded. So it's the root header expand toggle expand. So if we go root header, Expand, toggle, expand. So it's this icon here. Um, I think the display property, yeah. So the display property here is what gets toggled when the view param expanded gets toggled, if that makes sense. So that's just an example, that's one of them. Let's look at this interesting example, the script action. A cool thing you can do also with the expression bindings is this go to reference button and you can see the definition. This is very, very cool. Same thing with the script action. You can go to reference here. You can actually even change it. So you could see I'm referencing this expanded view parameter, testing uh, a condition, and then doing something with it. 
So just because this text view param or parameter that expanded appears here, uh, the configuration explorer with this filter applied will show it in this list. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so this view, I think that's, that's a good demonstration of the power of this tool. Uh, that's one way to look for things. Let's try to find a view here. Mm, maybe floor plans large. I'm gonna spend hopefully no more than one minute and try to find a view that has a message handler on it. This is another powerful way that I've used this tool is because when you have a message handler definition and it's not on the root container, which it doesn't have to be, I'm just uh, given an example. If it's not on the root container, then you have to drill down to the exact component to look at its definition to see what the message handler does. But with this tool, I found that if you do configuration explorer, um, if you have message handlers defined, first of all, they'll show up in this list under type. So you could see I have, I don't have any message handlers here defined, but I think that's not a big deal. So like you could see, I have um, this on startup. You see that there's first of all, something defined uh, on startup on the root container. Let's verify that that's true. Um, configure events on startup. Let me see if I had it open. I think it might've been open from the previous one. Yeah, so that was the, that was, I had multiple versions open. So hopefully that wasn't confusing, but if there's a specific script library call you wanna look, uh, you wanna search for, say you have a share dot my live dot some function. You can obviously search for it here and uh, it'll bring up every instance of its usage within the view, which is very, very powerful. One way, as I was saying with the message handler, you can find message handler definitions very quickly and also where they're, where they're being called and where they're being received. So that was another huge use case for this tool, the Configuration Explorer tool. So hopefully that gives you a demonstration of, of this tool and an appreciation for how you could use it in your uh, daily life as an Ignition developer. The only drawbacks of this tool that I wish uh, it did differently were um, higher scopes. So uh, not to stop at the view level, if you can do it for a folder for, or any other collection of views, that would be awesome if you could do it that way. Another uh, improvement for the Configuration Explorer is if you could search on a top level view, say here, we started with the main view. If you could search for Configuration Explorer on this view and it also search for all of your embedded views. So it would search for this large view here where it lives and then the small one and then basically go down all the way to the root or all the way down to the definition of the view itself. That would also be great because what I've found, uh, say you have a flex repeater um, with components in there and each component has a delete button and you call a message handler from each of those component delete buttons. You call a message handler that gets received by the main view that contains the flex repeater. Well then, and you wanted to find where the message handler was being called, you'd have to look for two in two different views because you can't search, you can't do configuration explorer on a scope that's broader than a view, if that makes sense. So you could do it narrower, you could do configuration explorer here, but you can't do it broader than a view. So that's one improvement, or that's a f one of the few improvements that I would make for, um, to this tool. But otherwise, this, this tool is great. I love using it, and uh, especially reverse engineering, debugging views, uh, message handler scripts, stuff like that. Uh, it definitely made my perspective development life a lot easier. So this is a short video that I recorded on Christmas Eve like a loser. But I do have plans for something pretty big in 2025 uh, that I want to put out when it's all done just to not not finish what I started. That's one of my big issues. So uh, I'll announce that when it's ready. Uh, I apologize for not posting more videos, but life's been kind of crazy the past few months. Anyway, thank you for watching. 
Uh, if you have any questions, uh, either post them in the comments of this video or join my Discord uh, where we have lively conversations about ignition. If that sounds like something you would like to do, uh, there will be a link in the description of this video. Uh, but until then, thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.